I recently did a live stream with Greg from King of Nerds where we talked about everything VR and in this clip you're about to see the part where we discuss Project Cambria. If you want to check out the full live stream I have Greg's channel linked in the description below. And before we get onto the interview I just want to acknowledge that the camera quality and audio on my end isn't the best. I actually did this interview at 8am in the morning, I just rolled out of bed, so there is some tweaking to be done there. So if you can excuse that for now, and that is something I'll tweak for our next live stream. So, you know, Cambria was announced last year by Meta, I don't know if they were, or I guess they were Meta, they were officially Meta in that video, and, and they, they had shown a little bit of Cambria, and since then, um, there's been a little bit more shown. But... Uh, how about you introduce the rest of, of Cambria and get get us started? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I know, I mean, we, we know more about Cambria in the past few weeks than we have over the past, you know, uh, months and even years, um, because quite a few quite a few things have been dropping. I know it's going to be released this year. Mm -hmm. Um it's going to be focused as far as I understand on work use cases. So it's not going to be like a gaming platform. So it's not going to be like quest three, as far mm -hmm. as I understand, it's going to be uh, a different target audience to it. And, and to that, I don't think there's going to be even controllers. It's going to be sort of hand tracking kind of stuff. Um, they're going to have, it's going to have a big focus on mixed reality too. Um, so I know the, the color external cameras, which will make uh, mixed reality even better. Uh, because obviously, as we know, the Quest and the Quest 2 have those yep. grainy black and white things yeah, <laughs> on, right. and it doesn't make for a great mixed reality experience. Right. Um, and a face and eye tracking is another key feature. Uh, so I think that's in my mind to make the metaverse an even greater reality because obviously you have to track your face and your eyes and that'd be reflected in your avatar. And so social experiences will be that much more realistic. Um, yeah, I, I'm really yeah. looking forward to eye tracking, first of all, because you've got that, you know, the, you currently have a, a foveated rendering where the, the center of your vision is a higher resolution than the outside, which, you know, allows mm. the, the headset to, to perform faster, you know, but only the things in the center of your vision. So with eye tracking, the ability to, to move that, that higher resolution spot with where you're moving your eyes, that sounds yeah. fantastic. But then also, um, I, and this goes, kind of goes back to just what VR means to us and what we, we originally talked about, the, the impact it has on you. And there's something lost, uh, you know, when you play, let's say, poker with someone in VR, you're just looking at still eyes. But I saw mm -hmm. like a couple of years ago, one of the original eye tracking demos, and you saw the eyes moving. So they did a before and after. One was just a person saying hello. It was like, an, like just like an anime character. And it was a person in VR and they were, they were moving, but the eyes were still. And then they turn on the eye tracking and like that sense of like, whoa, this is a person, you know, mm -hmm. came to life. And uh, that it, it's, it's a, a, it creates a humanity to the person and they become real. And maybe that's the thing that like will stop online harassment of, of, of another person because like, oh, that person just looked at me when I moved as opposed to it looking just like a giant, you know, mascot from some sports team. Very true. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's just that another step closer to making these interactions and uh, uh, more realistic in the sense as well in the workplace, you know, because I do a lot of Zoom meetings and calls and things like that in the place that I work. And it just powers into comparison when it comes to meeting someone in virtual reality. Yeah. And it just adds that another layer of realism that maybe employers will be more open for people to be working from home um, in, in these VR headsets. You know, you right. never know. Project Cambria might be the device that drives, further drives or pushes its revolution towards working from home, yeah. given that, you know, you can have these social interactions now, which are becoming closer and closer to how they are in real life. Um, and it makes it, to me, a lot more enjoyable to meet someone in this kind of semi-realistic environment right than it does over over a flat screen you know yeah. it's, a, it's a completely different experience and so i'm what i'm excited to see with project cambria because it is work focused to see the impact it does have on the workplace you know um and to see if it does result in more people working from home 
using these headsets and wanting to use these headsets for work purposes? Because I don't know about you, but I know Quest 2 you can use for work. However, I, I don't really feel that urge to use it because I don't think it's quite there yet in terms of, right. you know, sticking it on my head for six, seven hours a day, you know, doing work. I don't You're going to have a calcium, you know, mm. it's, it's the, the hand tracking, although I think it, you know, I, I, I'm especially interested in what's coming where it's the, the second version of it, where you can actually put your hands together and one doesn't disappear, but mm. the delay and the lack of any type of feedback, which, you know, short of having had the gloves, I don't know too much of how they're going to do that, but, um, grabbing something and it not happening as purely as it does with the controller and not having that feeling that you actually held on to something. Maybe it's something we get used to, but I can say really like right now, like moving a window with my hand and like by pointing like a finger laser at it. And it's not a, it's not a bad experience. It's just not a fun experience. Exactly. Yeah. I, I get the, I get the same kind of feeling. And so I want to ask like the big question, would you get a project cam at the moment from what you know of it? Is it something that you would invest in? Yeah, I would. Because it, the thing that I'm most looking forward to is if they really do have the cameras on the controllers, those cameras are supposed to do tracking just like they do on the headset of the Quest 2 now. And uh, that's supposed to, because like I loved uh, bow and arrow games. I still love bow and arrow games. and you know, PC VR, you've got the outside in tracking. So you can put your hand behind your back and it sees your hand. Uh, so the, w w when you draw an arrow, you go past the cameras on a quest. And so it kind of gets lost. So I, I found myself compensating and not doing something that I would do in real life, which is the opposite of the whole purpose of virtual reality. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to get so close to reality that you feel like you're really there. Right. And if I'm doing something other than what I would do, then it's not, it's not, the VR, at least not the VR I want. So um, like one of my favorite games is In Death and it's a bow and arrow game. I, at one point I was like third in the world, which doesn't really mean much uh, because, you know, if you stop playing after a while, everyone else passes you up. So it was really who plays the longest will eventually become first in the world. Uh, but this is before the quest. Uh, and uh, when I switched over to the quest, not switched, but when I got to quest and, and when In Death came out and I, that first time I pulled back and it lost my hand i was like ah this is not it was like moving the window with my fingers it was like it was frustrating i loved it i'm glad that that in death is on a quest because it's a great game but that disconnect like that mental disconnect just was like that's it like i i can't play it as much as i'd like to play it and if yeah. i think cambria could solve that by having a a, a camera on the controller and seeing because it's still looking even though the the front ones can't see me so that'd be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that that's a huge selling point. And yeah. it'd be interesting to see, because I know it's going to be linked to the Quest 2. Um, you're going to have some sort of uh, link there. And it'd be interesting to see how far it goes down the game path. Because we saw that demo that uh, Mark Zuckerberg was demonstrating in his quick video where he put it on and there was like um, an animal he was interacting with. Right. And even though it's for work purposes, obviously that demo was game focused. Yeah. And so it'd be interesting to see how far the gaming down the gaming path the Cambria goes. Yeah. Because I do feel though, even though it's focused mainly for work, uh, I do feel there's huge potential here for gaming. And for me, whether I buy it or not really depends on a couple of things. I think firstly, price point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's going to be more than a thousand dollars. Um, I've got something in my head. I don't know how accurate this is, but somewhere around the one, 1,199, 1,399 around that area. That's just, wow. just yeah. something that comes to mind. Right. Um, and if it's around that area in terms of price point, then I'd be, I'd happily pick it up given the extra, you know, tech and the, um, that you do get available for it. Sure. But, um, the other thing that really, really will set for me is the comfort factor. So, like I said, with the Quest 2, I mean, I've got the deluxe audio strap and um, and a few other things that make my experience as comfortable as possible for my Quest 2. And I would say it's, it's an acceptable level of comfortability, but even then, I wouldn't want to put it on my head for hours and work in it. It's right. not um, that level yet. Right. But if Cambria can offer something more comfortable than that, that makes me actually want to put it on my head, um, then I think that's going to be another huge selling point that will make me that make a break it for me. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the, the, 
you know, the Cadillac of VR is supposed to be the, the valve index and it definitely, you know, it's got that denim inner lining, uh, and it feels very nice. Uh, but at the end of the day, you still have something sitting on your face and potentially sitting on the bridge of your nose. Uh, and I agree. The quest feels, feels very good, but you know, like people search for videos of how to make the quest more comfortable. And a lot of people will stop playing altogether, uh, if they can't get it comfortable enough and, and understandably. So you were talking about price. Um, you know, the quest they're, they're losing money on the quest. You know, they're, they're yeah. selling them at three. It was $400 previously. And then they went down to $300 and it, it didn't get cheaper parts wise. It probably, if anything, it probably got more expensive. They're just trying, you know, to push them. And we didn't know that a year later they were going to change the name to meta and then you know, announce their whole online metaverse initiative. Uh, but you know, the quest is probably more realistically and me just guessing, I have no knowledge. I, I would say that they could probably retail that at six to $700. Um, uh, because I, I know like, um, uh, vive, uh, they came out with a vive and it, I mean, it's still out there that, that existed for a couple a number of months before the quest one. And it was like seven, 800 bucks, but it did basically all the things that, that the, uh, the quest and quest two do. And, yeah. um, they just didn't have the, the capital to back it up and, and sell it as a loss leader. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for AR. I, I don't see people walking around with anything the size of, of what we've seen at the Cambria, uh, outside their house though, or outside of work, you know, like AR is good, but, uh, and to have better cameras is good, but it's just another step in the meantime, I think until we eventually get to glasses or something else. Yeah, I do think exactly. I, I agree. I reckon that the uh, glasses are really the end point um, where where everyone's adopting this kind of tech because sure. it's so so seamless. And you're right. I think, well, we do know that obviously Facebook or Meta, they were lo losing a lot of money on their quests. Um, and people often said, you know, why, why are the Vive and things so expensive? And it wasn't that they were expensive. It was that the quest was so cheap. You know, they're right. sending them so it's quite an aggressive pricing strategy to right. to be the leader in that market. And what I'm excited about with Cambria is that it's the first real solid that I'm aware of, like real solid integration of VR and AR, this kind of like hybrid headset. And I'm in terms of gaming, and this is why I think it would be a great opportunity potentially to become a bit of a gaming platform too, not just work focused is because you think of the mixed reality experiences developers could create with that that headset. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was just recently, I'm doing a video on, on some of the best pass-through mixed reality experiences you can do on your Quest. Nice. And even though it's very limited, grainy black and white cameras, you know, sure. tracking's not the best, uh, you, you can feel the potential there. You know, I'm getting that same level of excitement I saw with some of the early you know, um, virtual reality demos where it's not like fully immersive, but you kind of get, you get it, you get like, wow, there's a lot of potential here. And I think right. with the Cambria's tech that can really take it to next level. And I'm, I'm, I'm most excited to see what, the, how the developers use that and, and make it into like these exciting experiences that integrate your, your real world. Cause we know that Cambria does have depth sensors too. So you'd think that as well, the mixed reality experiences are going to be, uh, I don't know, quite, quite well integrated compared to the stuff we have now. So speaking of, of, uh, depth sensors, uh, mm. this damn thing has had a depth sensor on it for like what, four years now. And they it hardly, hardly do anything with it. Remember you can check out the full live stream on King of the Nerds. I've linked Greg's channel in the description below. And I also have a newsletter that I try to get out once every week, straight to your email inbox. It's called XR Takeaway, and that covers some of the big XR news across the week. So if you want to be kept up to date with all the latest and greatest news on virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, then you might want to sign up to XR Takeaway. It's free and you'll get that news delivered from me straight to your inbox each week.